Senator, this law came about in reaction to cases in other states where people have been sued because they refused to contribute in some way to a same-sex wedding, a wedding photographer in New Mexico, for example. And I know you say this is an attempt in Arizona to protect people's religious beliefs, but the places where it's occurred in other states, like New Mexico, are states that have laws against discriminating against people based on sexual orientation. So Arizona doesn't have a state law protecting gay people. So there's no federal law either. So it's already legal to refuse service some, to someone who's gay in most cities in Arizona already, correct? Well, the bottom line for us and those who voted for it, and it was a majority in uh, both chambers, is it's as basic as religious freedom. Uh, you could say that it might be preemptive after we saw what has taken place in some other states, but we think it's nothing more and nothing less than uh, protecting religious freedom in our state, and we take that very seriously. And I understand that, but, but it is legal already to discriminate against somebody who's gay in Arizona. They, you can fire somebody because they're gay. They're gay. There's no law against that in, in most cities in Arizona, correct? Well, we, I, I've been in our Senate for six years, and I don't know of any uh, provision in our state laws to discriminate against anyone. But, but, I think but, but I sir, speak for as you, Democrats sir, as and you, Republicans as you, alike that we don't we don't want to discriminate against anybody. Right, but under federal law and under Arizona law, except for a few cities, there's no sexual orientation is not included among race and gender and disability as things you can't discriminate against. Correct. Well, it's yes or no, correct? That's why this bill, well, this bill will prevent discrimination, and that's what we want to do here. You're, but, uh, sir, with respect, you're not answering the question. Under Arizona law, state law, sexual orientation is not included in anti discrimination legislation, correct? Yes. Okay, so it's legal. You can fire somebody for being gay already, correct? We don't want that to happen right. here. That's but it, not my but it can understanding. Happen, yeah. I, and I would, I, I would, I don't know of anybody that would uh, advocate that or stand for it. Okay, but under this law, you say it's all about protecting people of faith in Arizona. Can you give me a specific example of someone in Arizona who's been forced to do something against their religious belief or successfully sued because of their faith? Again, I think if, if anything, you, this bill is preemptive to protect priests. You can't give and, me one example uh, of this actually happening. I, no, I can't, but I've, we've seen it in other states and we don't want it to happen here. But it's happened in other states that have laws protecting gay people specifically. That's what this bill is all about. And in Arizona, they don't have laws protecting gay people, so it can't happen in Arizona. Well, sir, the bottom line is this is not a discrimination bill. This is a re religious freedom bill. We but, want to protect religious freedom here. But you can't cite one example where religious freedom is under attack in Arizona. Not now, no, but how about tomorrow? Well, I, I don't understand what that means. I mean, well, if, you, if you can't cite say, in the entire we, history we of Arizona one case where religious freedom has been under attack, or even in the last year where it's been under attack, is this really the most important thing for you to be working on right now in, in the, the State House and the Senate? We're doing many things, sir. We are trying to stop Common Core from being implemented in the state. We're trying to secure the border as a border state. We can do multiple things here, and, and this is one of them, so to help me, protect religious freedom. Help me understand, under the, your law, under this law, if I'm a Catholic loan officer, say, in a bank, and I don't like the idea of loaning money to a divorced woman, because Jesus spoke against divorce very strongly, or I don't want to loan money to an unwed mother, even though she might be you know, able to, to pay me back as a loan officer, I just don't, it's against my religious belief. My religious belief is sincere. Under your law, I could refuse to do business with a unwed mother or a divorced woman, correct? I don't know where you're getting your hypotheticals from, sir. Divorced women, and what was the other one you cited? Unwed mother. 
I mean, Jesus who would spoke. be against an unwed mother? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be against a uh, a, a divorced woman. But sir, as I, you know, I don't understand. Sir, as you know, to no, no, I'm not sir, discrimination to the nth degree. No, actually, sir, I'm talking well, about what Jesus well, talked. Jesus spoke against divorce. He actually well, spoke against divorce. He never said anything about gay people. So there are plenty of people who would oppose doing business with a gay person. I'm saying, if under your law, if it's a sincere belief on the part of that loan officer. And doing business with that unwed mother or that divorced woman would not be a trivial or a technical or a minor burden on my beliefs. And that's my argument. Under your law, I don't have to do business with that person. I think you're being far-fetched with all due respect, sir. As a Christian, as most God-fearing men and women would respect unwed mothers, uh, divorced women, who would discriminate them? I've never heard of discriminating against people like that. I never have. I, I don't but, know but where I've you're your getting law. your hypotheticals from, sir. Well, I, by reading your law, and I'm coming up with an example of somebody who might be, who has a, there's plenty of people who oppose divorce and who, who have a sincere belief that it is absolutely wrong, that marriage is for life, you made a vow, and they don't want to do some business with someone who's divorced under your law, as long as that belief is sincere and as long as it's not a, a minor interaction that you have to have with that person, which I would argue loaning money to that person is not a minor interaction or a technical interaction. Um, under your law, it's certainly something that could be go to the courts about. I don't believe so, sir. Okay. You know, all of the pillars of society are under attack in the United States. The family, the traditional family, traditional marriage, mainline churches, the Boy Scouts, you name it. All of the pillars of society as we know it today are under attack, including religious freedom. Who's and that's under what attack this by bill who? is designed to do. Who's attacking well, it in Arizona? Well, it's throughout the country. Right. Trying to, we had a ballot measure a few years ago to pro define marriage as between one man and one woman. It was a coalition of Catholics, Evangelicals, and Mormons, and it passed, uh, and that is now part of our Constitution. Right. We want to protect traditional marriage. Right. So again, so no, no, so no florist in Arizona is gonna be forced to participate in a gay wedding, because A, you don't have gay weddings in Arizona, and, and you're not going to anytime soon, and B, under Arizona law, it's okay to discriminate against a gay person and refuse them service already. So that's two reasons why no person of faith is gonna be forced to interact with a gay person at their wedding. It's not gonna happen in Arizona. With all due respect, sir, I, I don't know of anybody in Arizona that would discriminate against a fellow human being. No, no Christian or, really, or nobody? Jew that I know of. I, I know people in New York who Not that discriminate I know of. funny. Really, there's nobody, discrimination doesn't exist in Arizona? Well, well, maybe you ought to move to Arizona. We're more people friendly here, apparently. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I, yeah. And, and by the way, by the way, sir, let me add a couple of things. One of the 10 or so candidates for governor of Arizona of both parties, granted there's only one Democrat, the rest are Republican. I am the only candidate for governor in Arizona who is promoting and defending this bill. Right, but again, also, you can't come up I'm with one the, example that this bill is designed to protect against. You can't come up with one example of a person of faith who's been under attack in your state. I, I want to bring in our NYU law professor, Kenji. Uh, under this law, my example, is it so far-fetched? Could a, could a person refuse to do business with somebody who's divorced or, or an unwed mother? They absolutely could. I mean, I think that's a completely fair reading, and in fact, the most plausible reading of the law, because the law, as you said, is very broad. It says, if there's a substantial burden on a sincerely held religious belief, that that is something that you can raise so as a So all the person in Arizona have to say is, I, th my belief is sincere. I'm a, I'm a devout Muslim, I'm a devout Catholic, whatever the, the, the faith is, and say that doing business with this person would be a substantial burden, defined as it's not trivial, it's not technical, it's not a minor interaction. I could say I don't have to do business with this person. Right. One caveat would be that you would have to, the government would then, could then come in and show that they had a compelling governmental interest, right? And that this is the least restrictive means of achieving that interest, or an individual could claim that. 
but that's a very, very stringent test in this context. You, so. you heard the good senator describing I, his position on this. Kenji, what do you make of his argument? Um, uh, frankly, a little bit mystified by what the senator was saying when he said that uh, this was not done with any intent to discriminate, that Arizonans don't discriminate. Uh, is he saying that if we actually look through the uh, case law in Arizona that we would see no instances of discrimination in Arizona? So that's one thought. Another thought would be we all know what the statute is. We all know where it came from. The individual who proposed it, Senator Yarbrough, said that he was troubled by what had happened in New Mexico when a wedding photographer was required to uh, participate and actually offer services because she and he, the couple, held themselves open up held themselves open to the public as photographers to photograph a same-sex wedding. And so it was this Elaine photography case in which the plaintiffs, the same-sex couple, prevailed all the way up to the New Mexico Supreme Court that these folks are trying to preempt. And so when you hear the good senator talking about how he wants to uphold the pillars of society, in essence, he's not equating um, bans on same-sex marriage with discrimination against gay people. So I think that's one way in which we're talking past each other. But even giving him that and saying, okay, it's not discrimination against gay people to have bans on same-sex marriage there, the whole impetus behind this law was to discriminate against gays and lesbians. So it's, it's very strange to do this. So it's it's well, actually a very sad chapter in Arizona's history, if I could just close out the thought. If you stack it up against uh, uh, denial of the Martin Luther King uh, uh, holiday in the, in the 1980s, if you think about uh, SB 1070, you know, just a couple of uh, years ago that went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and now with this. I mean, Arizona does not look like, I don't think either you or I are going to be packing our bags and moving to Arizona because it's such a friendly place. You know, Senator, you, you were on the tourism caucus, you know, I understand, in the Senate. Aren't you concerned in, about the in impact fact, on I, this? I start, you started I, it. I started the, tur I started the tourism ca caucus. We are number one in the country by most business magazines as the best state in the country to start a business. We're number one for uh, job creation as, but as you know, Forbes businesses, magazine, and we're number have, eight in overall pro-business climate. But as you but, know, but businesses sir, have come out saying in, that this is, this is bad for business, this is bad for the state. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Because, but you, because there has become a media frenzy on this that has caused other candidates for governor You're seriously to blaming the media under on the this? pressure of the media. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, well, but when you, when you take discrimination against unwed mothers and, di and divorced women, I have never heard of that in my entire life. You're, it's like you're starting a cottage industry of perceived and are, are you telling me that there's nobody they who don't opposes exist divorce here. you're telling me there's nobody who opposes divorce everybody that i know wants strong marriages right. strong traditional marriages they want them and and divorce is a sad thing it usually hurts children and we don't want that that's why we want to strengthen traditional marriage as defined between but but, but one you're man saying and you're assuming and, under and your families. law that everybody has the sort of the same religious beliefs as you do but there are many there are dozens of religions no, there's I'm probably not. well there's probably hundreds of religions there are. in the united states with all sorts of different beliefs yes. so you're saying everybody has to be able to act according to their own beliefs. And I understand that desire. That's part well, of America, the protection of religious freedom. And that's one of the great things about this country. But at the yes, same time, can and a that's society what this exist? bill is all about. But can a society exist where everybody gets to decide who they interact with and who they don't based solely on their religious beliefs? And if, for whatever reason, irrationally, somebody doesn't like somebody else, as long as it's a sincerely held belief under your law, they don't have to deal with that person. This bill is designed for religious freedom. No matter how you twist and try to turn it, that's what that is the bottom line here. You can't it is nobly question. perceived. It was nobly ba uh, voted on, and we hope the governor signs it into law. Can she? Yeah, I just want to uh, put this in a broader national context. Actually, if you think about these religious liberties arguments, every time there's been a chapter, a page has turned in our civil rights history. There have been claimants who have opposed those advances in civil rights out of claims of religious liberty. And so the ACLU has a great article on this where they say, you know, back in the integration days, a lot of uh, 
individuals who oppose integration, pro-segregationists, said, on religious liberty grounds, we oppose integration. So the famous Piggy Park case was a restaurant that refused to integrate, and the owner said, I'm going to refuse to integrate on religious grounds. Flash forward to the 1980s, you know, in the uh, wake of feminism, a lot of religious institutions said, we do not want to uh, give married women the same salaries as married men because our religious tenets say that the woman's place is in the home, especially after marriage. Those cases were litigated in the 1980s and even in the 1990s. Right? So this is just the final chapter where uh, we see discrimination against uh, gays and lesbians being uh, coming over the horizon uh, to Arizona and this preemptive strike against it in the form of we're going to be able to have these religious liberties in place so we can make those kinds of claims and they're going to be ultimately treated by history in the same way. Senator, let, let me ask you, Senator, finally, well, it, it is, if somebody yeah, is sure. fired because they're gay or lesbian in your state, is that discrimination? Would you say that's discrimination? I. I don't know of anybody dis that discriminates in our state, sir. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just saying, but if somebody, if somebody is fired, a boss doesn't like some guy on their staff or a woman on their staff because they're gay or lesbian, and they're fired for that, which is legal because there's no protection against for sexual orientation, is that discrimination? You know, you're trying to distort a religious freedom bill and sir and you're running for governor of the state of Arizona sir, of you're running for governor I of the am, state sir. of Arizona yes, I am. you're going to be governor of gay and lesbian yes, people sir. and you can't even go on the record and say if a gay and lesbian person is fired simply for being gay or lesbian that's discrimination you can't even make that leap and just say yeah that would be discrimination I I don't know of any case like you just cited sir and, and by the way you that's never happened in the United SB States 1070 you attacked our SB 1070 bill. It was a great bill. We're a border state. We have every. You, you're right now talking to about a bill from two years ago. That's, the border. You're trying to change no, the subject. No, you brought it up. You brought it up, not me, sir. Actually, our guest you did. You brought it up. Actually, our guest did. But, okay. but again, well, you, again, you're. Okay. You, well. I just I want to give you one more opportunity because I think this is going to come back on you. If somebody anywhere in America is fired because they're gay or lesbian, and that's the reason they're fired, just because somebody doesn't like them and it's legal in that state. Is that discrimination? I'm against all discrimination and I want maximum f uh, religious freedom, sir. So, okay, that's, you can't answer that question then. I'm, I, I, I gave you the opportunity. That's Senator, my answer to you. I hear I you. Know, I know you're trying to set me up and I'm not gonna stand for it, sir. Okay, Senator Al uh, Melvin, I appreciate your time, thank you. Okay, thank you.